our world right now, artificial intelligence has creeped up in a lot of our daily existence, or in our daily lives. And one of which is that I noticed that uh, in the corporate setting, artificial intelligence is actually being used right now in order to uh, make decisions. No? And uh, because of that, I got curious. And uh, I saw the need that there must be some kind of legal framework that should actually address uh, artificial intelligence no, in the corporate setting. The earliest concept of artificial intelligence came from the groundwork laid by the famous British scientist Alan Turing during the mid-20th century, which was the development of an algorithm that would ultimately pave the way for modern-day computers. Today, Turing's research and philosophy serve as the foundation of modern-day artificial intelligence. A Hong Kong venture capitalist firm on the brink of bankruptcy commissioned a team of big data analysts to help assist the board of directors in solving its management issues. The team created an artificial intelligence system called VITAL, validating investment tool for advancing life sciences. Now, the, the, the thing about artificial intelligence is that uh, its strength is also, it's also its weakness. No? The main benefit really of artificial intelligence is that its decisions are bereft of any human emotion, no? of any fallacious logic. But however, this particular uh, strength is also its weakness because there are some decisions that actually need human empathy and uh, a moral compass. No? So artificial intelligence cannot do that. No? And uh, that is one of its main uh, disadvantages. So uh, for example, i give an example when it comes to that. For example, if a corporation must make a decision to lay off, let's say, 1,000 workers. No? And this will be cost beneficial to the corporation. Now, the thing about that is if you feed that data through artificial intelligence systems, then, of course, the system will decide towards that objective. So it's cost efficient to lay off those 1,000 workers. Fron raises a basic concern on liability issues that a company may encounter with the use of artificial intelligence, which does not have any legal personality. Due to what it lacks, robots and artificial intelligence are unable to be held accountable, as they are not self-aware. In the case of management decisions that result in damages, losses, or even injuries to stakeholders, who then should be made liable? Hefron proposes a theoretical framework that is based on the ASEAN Guide on AI Governance and Ethics, a living document that provides a set of guidelines for governments and businesses in the use of artificial intelligence. Through this framework, it would address and regulate the use of artificial intelligence, as well as robots. The guidelines offer seven key principles, which are transparency and explainability, fairness and equity, security and safety, robustness and reliability, human centricity, privacy and data governance, and lastly, accountability and integrity. At the end of the day, uh, artificial intelligence systems should just be tools. No? They, they should not really replace uh, us human beings when we make decisions. And uh, because of that, this system, no, the, this uh, framework or ethical system, must assure that the artificial intelligence systems uh, that are used in corporate decisions should follow this uh, accepted uh, societal values and moral code. And then another is that uh, there must also be some kind of uh, assurance that uh, the data sets no, and the decisions that are going to be uh, crafted by these artificial intelligence systems must be protected against data privacy breaches. We have now systems in place, so we have the Data Privacy Act no, and several other uh, laws when it comes to uh, the security of data privacy, they should all be integrated into the artificial intelligence systems used by corporations no? uh, to assure that uh, the data is uh, secured and it should not be uh, illegally used.